Here you can see how I've been making progress with the assembly of the lower control arms, the shock mounts, and ultimately attaching the bracket for the rear of the control arm. Now you notice there's actually a really big spacer here. This is 3 8 inch thick. On this particular side that was necessary in order to get the proper motion because I had only attached the front bracket, as we can see here, I hadn't ever attached the rear bracket. Now using that approach, it means that there's some play, there's some movement here that we want to consider. And what you'll notice is it's actually changing the position of the lower, uh, lower ball joint quite a bit. So this is in a fully compressed view, and if we were to fully extend it, 15 inch shock, we notice that it goes all the way down to there. And of course, we end up with the challenge of, of what do we do with this play. So I'm probably going to bias this particular control arm toward the front, moving this ball joint as far forward as I can, because the opposite problem occurred on the other side, where I found this ball joint was positioned too far toward the front. Now this has a similar level of play. As you can see here, I haven't attached the rear bracket yet. You might also notice that I have a lot of spacers placed in between here in order to, again, get the right control arm toward the rear. And on the other side, you'll notice spacers are doing the opposite in order to get the control arm toward the front. And I found this was necessary because the lower ball joints from side to side were uh, fore and aft, a difference of about three quarters of an inch, which is pretty significant. I felt that three quarters of an inch was too much in order to have the front wheels tracking di uh, differently. And so I'm going to focus on getting this ball joint toward the rear. As you can see, I still have some play in all the rubber bushings. And I'm going to focus on getting this lower ball joint toward the front. And the goal being that when I look at it from side to side, if I were to come at it from a top view, what we would expect is that these ball joints would be perfectly in line from a top view. And so that's where the adjustability comes in with the rubber bushings. This was not by design. Uh, this was just because of uh, the accuracy of my control arms. Isn't that great? And I had mounted these brackets uh, in the assembly process uh, arguably too soon. I should have mounted these brackets uh, waiting till the control arms were fully assembled, get the lower bracket in, in the front and the rear um, should have been done uh, at the same time. They should have been mounted to the chassis at the same time. So as I mentioned before, there's a 3 8 inch plate going to be added here in order to get this bracket at the correct height so that I have a correct range of motion. I found that without that, it would be floating in space. And easily shown, floating in space. Except in the most extreme condition when in full, in full um, bump. On the other side, I do have some previous brackets that I had removed, and you'll notice there's a big gap right here. So I need to put some plate steel here anyway to cover that gap and, and weld everything shut. But what I found, again, in this situation, when I work this through the range of motion, that kind of wants to float up. There you can see how it wants to rise up. And so putting a piece of plate in that gap is probably not a bad idea. It won't be 3 8 of an inch. It'll probably be more like, a, more like an eighth of an inch. Um, but I need some plate steel under that bracket anyway.